Away! A fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> new prosperity to the early western United States, but with the railroad came an army of confidence men who tried to rob the pioneers of their property and savings. They found an opponent in the masked rider of the plains, however, who was more than a match for them. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for Pecos County! Double's waving in the trail ahead! Oh, Silver! Away! In the cafe at Pecos, old Missouri, Mustang Mag's foreman, was for the first time in his life receiving a great deal of attention. The kind of attention he had long been convinced he deserved, but had always been denied. Two strangers to old Missouri had struck up an acquaintance at the bar. And now all three were seated like old friends at one of the tables. Well, Abbott, as long as this is the last thing we're going to have, let's make it a toast. Sure, to what? We'll drink this into the squares, bravest and smartest cattlemen ever to sit the saddle in the lone star state of Texas. We'll drink it to the next sheriff of Pecos County. To make it short... We'll drink to Missouri. Cooper, I'll join you in that gladly. <laughs> oh, now, fellas. Missouri, I reckon you ain't got the least notion how you talked about and looked up to. And I don't mean just here in Texas. <laughs> no, siree. Why, there's folks west of the Mississippi that know your name who couldn't tell you who's a sitting in the White House back east in Washington. I've asked folks if they've heard of the Lone Ranger, and they've said no. Then I've asked them about old Missouri over to Pecos. And they've told me things you've done that you've likely forgot yourself. <laughs> oh, so, Missouri, no. that should explain why Cooper and me thought of you first off. After we'd been here long enough to see what this county needed was a real fighting man for sheriff. Betty. You will take the office, won't you, Missouri? Aye. Fine, fine, I knew you would. Knew you was public-spirited enough to do your duty when you seen it. Now, look, Just one thing, Missouri... What's your stand on rustlers and such? Well, Good I... for you. Come out four square like that during the campaign, and you'll get the voters behind you 100%. Yes, sir. Now, if you'll just sign this, Missouri, here's pen and ink. Hey, what? Hey, what? It, it, uh, it tells you how to stand on law and order and says you're willing to serve the people in this position of public trust. <laughs> Put your name to it, or, or folks won't believe a busy man like you would spare the time for the job. Thank you, Missouri. That's fine and dandy. Oh, no, no, no. I'll take it. <laughs> now, I've got something to show folks when I tell them you're our candidate. Oh, I'm sorry, Missouri. What was you going to say? Mm, nothing. <laughs> yeah? You know, gents, 
I'll bet I'll make a right good share for that. Although Missouri's new friends, Cooper and Dabbitt, confidently forecast a great majority in favor of Missouri for sheriff, the old fellow found on his return to Mustang Mag's ranch that there existed a powerful minority definitely opposed to him. This minority was Mustang Mag herself. You a sheriff? Hm. I'd as soon stuff a bag with hay and call it a sheriff. For a lawman, you'd be worth less than a pitchfork to shovel water with. Why, you're a worthless stove-in... Uh, Addle-headed? Addle-headed, thank you, Missouri. Old Mosser horn without life enough left in you'd up and die. Who are these fellas, anyhow? I never heard of no gents by their names in these parts of four. I ain't been here long. Cattlemen? Uh-huh. <laughs> Sounds to me like they ain't got the sense needed to herd sheep. Told you what a great fellow you was, huh? Oh, I wouldn't say they missed the facts by so far. No further than from here to the border. Well, I won't say you can't run for sheriff, Missouri. All I'll say is that if you do, you can draw your time and make tracks. I won't have my outfit the laughing stock of the county. If anybody's going to act a fool around here, I'll do it myself. Now, how about that fellow from the railroad? What did he say? Oh! Guy, huh? that's what I forgot. I knowed it was something. You never seen him? Well, I got to talking with them fellas. There's only what in thunderation do you suppose to give you the day off to go to town for? I spent all last evening pounding into your thick head the kind of terms you'd make. Because I can't spare the time to go to town myself. I fix it so you could sign the papers without me. Now, here you are, not a thing's been done. Nice, I'd like to wring your neck. But, uh... Yeah, maybe the railroad won't even want to buy my timber. Maybe they'll be so disgusted they'll go somewhere else. And if they do, I won't blame them. Oh, that's foolish. What's foolish? Seeing they won't buy your timber just because I happen to forget. If they don't buy from you, Mag, where will they? Who else around here's got any? Shucks, you talk like timber grew on trees. Well, don't it? Ah, you know what I mean. But if I do, it's because I don't pay any attention to what you say. All right, Missouri, you listen to me. I don't care if it is getting on to sundown. You're saddling up this minute and you're dusting pronto back to town. And you're finding that railroad fellow if it takes from now till cows grow feathers. You mean without waiting to eat? Missouri? Now, don't get hasty, Mac. I'm a-going, I'm a-going. Wait. And what? Look outside there. Slim just rode up. My lands, I do believe he's been shot. Shot? He's holding on to his arm. Here, Slim, get in here. Well, Ma'am, you can give me something clean for wrapping up this place where I got drilled, and then you can give me my wages. Next outfit I'll work for will be where a feller's told what's going on. Missouri, get some cloth. Uh-huh. Now then, Slim, just what you mean by that laugh? Ma'am, didn't you tell me and Foggy to guard your timber? I did. With orders to run off anybody going in them woods without permission? I had to. That timber's going to bring me cash. I couldn't take the chance somebody might set it afire. Then why didn't you tell us it was sold? Why'd you let us get in a gunfight with them fellas when they come to take over? What's that? You heard me. Somebody claimed they bought that timber. Well, didn't they? They did not. Who were they? Why, that fella Cooper and his partner Abbott. Now, wait, Mag. Something doggone funny about this. You think I don't know it? But if you didn't sell, where'd they get that deed signed by Missouri? Don't tell me they didn't have one, because I've seen it. Don't tell me Missouri never signed it, because I know his writing just like I know my own. Missouri! Missouri, I'm going to ask you some questions. Huh? Don't act funny and don't try to dodge him, or I swear I'll laugh this so hard you'll be able to scratch the back of your neck with your front teeth. Gosh, man. What was what? the name of them fellas wanted you to run for sheriff? I told you. Then tell me again. Why, Mr. Abbott and Mr. Cooper. That was their names, man. But why did they get you to sign anything? You think I'm an idiot? Yes. Oh. Answer my question. I never signed a thing but that paper they'd made out to show folks I was willing to be sheriff. Then you did sign the paper. Yeah, did but... Did you read it first? I didn't have to. Huh? They told me what was in it. Doggone. Oh. I'm trying not to, Missouri. I'm trying not to. Huh? Not to what? Not to skin you alive and use your hide for saddle leather. 
Why, you flea brain old fool, do you know what you went and done? You signed away my timber! <laughs> following day, when Mag, accompanied by the sheriff, rode to the timberland in question, she not only found Cooper and Abbott living in an old cabin there, but discovered that they had already hired a crew to begin lumber operations. The two men smoothly denied Mag's charges. The sheriff was uncertain how to act. Well, I don't know, Mag. Don't get the notion I think you've lied to me. I don't. These fellas have got a deed to this land, and they say they've already entered it on the books with the county clerk. Now, I'm wondering about something. Yeah? I'm wondering if Missouri's been honest to, with you about this. These fellas said they paid him. Why couldn't he have kept the cash for himself and made up that story he told you? You're calling Missouri crooked? Well... He's as straight as you are. All that's wrong with him is he's too simple to live. <laughs> Nobody could be that simple. <laughs> you just ain't acquainted with Missouri the way I am. Well, from the smirks on your faces, it looked as though you figured you put something over on me. Well, not at all, man. We just kept you from putting something over on us. Think you got me stopped, huh? Well, we ain't going to worry if that's what you mean. No. Well, if for either one of you was much older, you're going to worry plenty. <laughs> yeah. I'm taking this into court. <laughs> Why, ma'am, you don't say. And as sure as I'm standing here, the judge will decide in my favor. That's so. But even if he don't, you still ain't got me whipped. No? No, Mag, don't go to threatening. Well, let her finish, Sheriff. <laughs> I'm kind of curious to hear what you think she's got up her sleeve. I'm sending for a friend of mine. <laughs> yeah? Who might that be? The Lone Ranger. Now laugh that off. <laughs> What's the matter? You swallow something sour? <laughs> Three days later, as the masked man and Tonto were completing the last leg of their journey, they suddenly caught sight of a horseman whom they recognized as a member of Mustang Mag's crew. It was Slim urging his mount toward town. The masked man hailed him with... Hold on there! Oh, oh, this will be... Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Well, you fellas must be the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Ah, right. I call you Slim. You work for Mag. Uh-huh. What's happening? We heard Crooks had stolen a timberland, and she's taking the case to court. Does it look as though the court will decide in her favor? It'll have to. Good. But by the time it does, it won't make no difference. No? Abbott and Cooper ain't waiting. They're clearing off that land just as fast as they can. They figure by the time the court decides, they'll have all that timber cut and haul the railroad. They'll get the cash for it and clear out. That's why I'm heading for town right now. It is? Mm-hmm. Time to see the judge. Mag wants an injunction to stop him till there's a decision. An injunction, huh? And she sent you? She couldn't get away. She wrote to the judge. That's what's in this letter. Turn back. Eh? Forget the injunction. Let those fellows go ahead. Hey, you loco. You know what you're doing? Exactly. Why, well, if it turn back, them skunks can keep on cutting timber. Yes. Is that what you want him to do? It is. Then they've bought you out. Stand aside. I ain't turning back for you or anybody. Get up, fella. No, Don't you me. don't. Let go of that bridle. I'll take that letter. Look out. There. You, you double crosser. Now you can ride ahead if you wish. Without that letter, what good would it do me? None. Then I'll go back and get another. I promise you it'll never reach the judge. Mister? Well? They say you're lightning fast on the draw. I reckon if you wanted, you could drill me before I hardly started to reach. Yes? But that ain't stopping me from telling you something. What? It don't matter whether he calls himself the Lone Ranger or whatever. The man that'd sell out a friend is worse than a snake. So there's my opinion of you. Get up, Rob. Get up there. Uh, him heap man. It couldn't be helped, Tato. Come, we'll make camp. Uh, get him up, scum. I'll sit on my hallway. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Slim reported his meeting with the Lone Ranger to Mustang Mag. That's exactly what happened, Mag. Now you see what kind of a friend that polecat turned out to be. Slim. Eh? Huh? You're almost the best man I got on the place. But if I didn't savvy you said that because you didn't know nobody, you'd be through. Huh? You... You mean you still figure he's on your side? I know he is. Even after what he's done? Yes. Ma'am, with your kind of faith, I'd tackle Billy the Kid and Geronimo all at once. Doggone. Well, well, anyhow, you're going to write the judge again, ain't you? Masked man told you you wouldn't let word get through? Mm Mm-hmm. But you can trust me, ma'am. I know what to look out for now. Won't be stopped a second time. It won't be a second time. No? If he don't want me to get an injunction to halt them crooks, he's got his reasons. Doggone. And I reckon the good ones. Now, just forget this, Slim. Go on back to bunkhouse. I'm not worrying. I know the Lone Ranger's on hand, and, well, I guess that's all I need to know. In the meantime, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had made camp in a secluded spot convenient both to Mustang Mag's ranch house and to the timberland where Abbott and Cooper were supervising the operations of their crew. Twenty-four hours went by, during which time the masked man made himself familiar with the situation. Then he returned to camp and gave Tonto certain orders. Tonto saddled Scout while he listened, and... You won't have to hurry, Kimasabi. Ah. It'll take them the better part of a month to complete the clearing of that timberland. When it's been cleared, the lumber will have to be freighted to the railroad's construction camp. Not right. They don't get paid until all of it has been delivered. Barker is the agent of the railroad who made the deal. Why him not wait? Until this court fight is over? Uh. He can't. The railroad needs lumber as quickly as it can get it. Barker has to take the chance that Abbott and Cooper's claim will be upheld. If it isn't, then of course the railroad will have to come to terms with Meg. Mm. I understand Barker is remaining in Pecos until the timber has all been cut and is actually on the way to the construction camp. Then what him do? He'll accompany Abbott and Cooper on the trip and pay them when they get there. Oh. Unless we prevent it. How long do you think it'll take you to find Chief Thundercloud? Maybe a week. Good. When you see him, tell him exactly what I've told you. Counter do it. He's helped us before. I'm confident he will again. Uh, him good friend. Ready? Uh, be ready. And good luck, Kimosabe. And we'll meet at the place I named. Uh, get him up, Scout. Get him up. <laughs> A month went by. Cooper and Abbott had completed the work of cutting Mag's timber, while the suit to determine the ownership of the land still dragged on in the court at Pecos. Nevertheless, Mustang Mag still held to her faith in the masked man. He hasn't let me down. I know he hasn't. Yeah, I suppose not, Mag. But don't you think it's kind of funny he never showed himself? Slim seen him. But we ain't. What's that got to do with it, Missouri? Well, wouldn't he want us to know he's on the job? I know he is. Sure, but... I reckon in a way it's kind of a compliment to us that he ain't been here. It's his way of telling us he knows we got faith in him. If he doubted it, he'd come round to make sure we wasn't worrying. No, Missouri, I'm always glad to see him, of course. But he's one fellow with his own way of doing things, and it ain't for us to question it. Thank you, Mag. Well, he's putting catfish. You're right. I was confident you wouldn't lose faith. Oh, my stars. I never meant for you to hear me. I know it. <laughs> Friend, I'm that glad to see you. Mag, today the last of the timber was loaded and sent on its way to the construction camp. Was it honest? Yes. I've just come from there. Abbott, Cooper, and Barker have left with the wagons. But that means... That's Missouri. Mm. You know, if Abbott and Cooper ever get to camp and collect that cash, they won't be back, don't you? Yes. But this is the way you plan things? It is. Well, I don't savvy, but that's all right, I guess. Is that what you come to tell us? That the timber's gone, but we're not to worry about it? Only in part. Yeah? Chiefly, I came to learn if you and Missouri would obey a request of mine without asking why I made it. Don't you know we would? Just name it, friend! Abbott and Cooper, keeping with the wagons, will travel slowly. They can't reach the railroad camp in less than ten days. Uh-huh. So you won't have to leave at once. If you wait until the end of the week, you can still overtake them. We're to join them, fellas? Yes. Keep still, Missouri. Let him finish. Go on, Fred. They travel through some rather wild country before they get there, especially between Saddle Butte and Apache Pass. You know that district? Enough to get there! That's all that's necessary. 
That's where I want you to join them. And when we do? Pretend you're there to make one last effort to prevent the sale of your timber. <laughs> that won't be hard. You'll go? Of course we will. And prime for the polecats, too. I'll get out my buffalo You'll gun. You'll do no such uh, thing. But, You'll uh, carry no guns when I'm alone. But, uh, but I've got to protect you, don't I? Protect me? Why, you spavin' old idiot, you'd have to be skin full of liquor to say boo to a rabbit. Oh, no, man. You what? What? Now see what you've done. While you're talking, he leaves. Missouri, someday you're gonna stretch my patience till it just naturally up and hits you in the face. <laughs> It was a week later that Abbott and Cooper, having passed Saddle Butte, rode in advance of their freighters toward Apache Pass, still a day's journey away. Barker, who was riding with them, suddenly turned in his saddle and pointed toward the west. Someone's coming. Huh? Oh, yeah. wonder who it is. Make him out, Abbott? One's a woman, ain't it? I think so. They're waving. Better rain up. Oh, boy. Oh, there. Oh, 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 there. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I'll be doggone. Huh? <laughs> That's Mustang Mag. Don't you recognize her? The fella's Missouri. Why, sure it is. Hold on! Now what she want? Reckon I could guess. Yeah, reckon I could, too. Howdy, Mag. What brings you here? Hello, Missouri. It looks like you folks have been riding hard. What's on your... My business ain't with you, so kindly keep your face shut. But I was... Mr. Barker, I want to know if you really figured to pay these crooks for timber belonging to me. Why, I... Mag, careful what you call us. Can you, you be doggone careful how you talk to Mag, mister? Or you'll have me to deal with. I got a score to settle with you anyhow. <laughs> I hear you're running for sheriff, Missouri. Any truth in it? <laughs> Missouri, keep quiet. Don't pay no attention to him. Ah. Mr. Barker, you ain't answered me yet. Mag, what else can I do? Give the money to me. But the land this timber came from is in their names. Because of a crooked trick. I'm sorry, Mag. Hey, hey what man? Hurry, Hurry. Indians. The hills are full of Indians. What's that he said about Indians? What in the world is he? We're right in the middle of Indian country. Oh, oh, there's over. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, oh saw Indians. Look there. Yeah, look there. there. And there. And behind you. They're surrounded. <laughs> Everywhere the masked man pointed, Indians were silhouetted against the sky. Apparently, there were hundreds of them, all shouting their war cries as they bent low over the backs of their fleet ponies. Almost before the party of white men could realize its danger, it was completely circled by howling painted braves. They made no attempt to close in, and when one of their number gave a signal, they fell silent and reined their mounts to a halt. The Indian who had given the command detached himself from his followers and rode alone toward the waiting whites. Yeah, that must be their chief. Yeah. I'll fix the vomit. Hold up that gun. Hey! You fool, the masked man's right. Shoot this fellow and those Indians will be on us in a moment. We won't have a chance. Put your gun away, Cooper. No, this I... fellow's a chief, Barker. Parley with him. See what he wants. I will. How? Me, Chief Thundercloud. You savvy the white man's talk? Ah, uh, me savvy. And what is it you want? Why have you stopped this? Me want them. What? Me and Abbott? What for? You cut them down trees belong great spirit. Huh? You cut them down trees sacred to red man. Now you pay. What the... He may be speaking the truth. If he is, this is serious. You can't always know what places the Indians hold sacred. One may have been Mag's Forest. With trees as rare as they are in this district, it's very probable. Y- you mean these Indians would punish us for it? What does it look like to you? No, they can't. We, we'll fight them. And how far would we get? Counting the drivers of those wagons, there's hardly more than a dozen of us. I say Thundercloud has at least 200 braves with him to obey his commands. Me not make war on you. Me just take them. You come. No, get back. No, no don't touch you it. You come. Stand back. Don't interfere, Barker. Those braves attack, they'd wipe us out in five minutes. Wait, you fellas ain't gonna let them engines take us, are you? You gotta help us, please. <laughs> They'll kill us. Uh... Kill! No, no! Wait! But they will! Thundercloud! Huh? One of that woods hadn't belonged to them, but to someone else. What if they'd cut this timber from it because they'd been ordered to by the real owner? Would you still hold them to blame? Would you still want to punish them? That's it. It wasn't our fault. We we was told to do it. Who tell them? <laughs> it was Meg here. She owns them woods. It was her had us cut them. That true? Well, I... It is true. Do you realize what you're saying? You're sacrificing a woman to save these fellows? Perhaps. You're dirty. Easy. What do you say, Thundercloud? Would you take these fellows, then? You speak true, me no hurt them. I've told the truth. Honest, it's so, Injun. You ain't gonna kill us for doing what we was told to do, eh? 
If anybody's to blame, it's me. Sure it is, you rotten skunks. One moment, huh? Barker, you, you should have paper, something to write on in your saddlebags. I have. And let these fellows write down a statement that the timber belongs to Mag. And they have no claim on it. Yes, I can do that, but... I... No, I won't write no such thing. Just a trick to... Shut up, you fool. You lie to Thundercloud. No, Thundercloud. They told the truth when they said it belonged to Mag. They're going to make a statement to that effect, written in the white man's language. Well, listen, you can't... Or would you rather we let Thundercloud take you and your partner? I... Cooper, we ain't got no choice. The paper, Barker... You write that statement and sign it, Cooper? I, uh... Will you? Yes. Here's paper and pencil. Just put down that the lumber sold to the railroad belongs to Mag. Then sign your name, Cooper, and Abbott can sign his. Hurry up, Cooper. I don't like the way that engine's looking at us. <laughs> this right? Now sign it. Good. You're next, Abbott. There. Very well. I'll take that. That's all, Thundercloud. It worked. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Me go now. Carl! What was that you said? Is that engine a friend of yours? Was you playing a trick on us? What do you think it was? Why, you... You got the timber by a trick. If you lost it the same way, it's just what you deserve. You can't do that to us. I'll fix you. Oh, got the mask, man. Stand aside. Let me at it. Oh, oh my gosh. Thanks a lot, Missouri. You knocked him out. Well, don't go on. <laughs> Say, Meg, I just don't know my own strength. Hello, Silver Hoy! The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. (laughs) 